Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Suicide bombing kills dozens at mosque in Pakistan's space shower. China exploiting park vulnerability to make Islamabad dance to its tune. And Afghanistan female lawyers are on the run from men they prosecuted. Let's begin the show with Pakistan, where around 100 people died and a further of 225 people suffered injuries after a suicide bomber blew himself up in a mosque in the city of Peshawar. The attack was thought to be targeted at members of police force. The suspicion directly fell on Tehreek-e Taliban, Pakistan. However, the group denied any involvement after the Afghan Taliban condemned the act. A report. A violent act that destroyed the place of prayer. As it was filling up for the afternoon prayer, a huge explosion jolted the Peshawar Mosque in northwest Pakistan. Hundreds were inside. Some survivors crawled through the rubble. Rescue workers used their bare hands to find others. According to media reports, the suicide bombing claimed the lives of at least 100 individuals the majority of whom were police officers and injured more than 200 others. We <laughs> क्योंकि हाल के अंदर ही था मैं तो दो तीन मिनट बाद जब मुझे होश अपना हो, अपने होश आया तो अपने आप को मलबे तले आया The suspicion directly fell on Tehreek Taliban it grew even stronger when Sarb Kaf Muhammad claimed responsibility for the attack However TTP reversed course after the Taliban condemned the attack the militancy has been using Khyber Pakhtunkhwa as its base. Since November, TTP has been fighting an ongoing battle in Pakistan against the police and army. The Pakistani government has been under fire from both domestic and foreign experts for concessions it has made to the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. These scholars contend that Pakistan's morally untenable habit of engaging in negotiations with extreme organizations legitimizes terrorist objectives. The Islamic Republic's successive governments have long toyed with the idea of dangerous religious extremists breeding in Pakistan and promoting the expansion of transnational terrorist organizations. <laughs> Pakistan has lost thousands of lives in the country, but still the country has not changed its strategy. Failing to prosecute several leaders of UN proscribed terror groups and even going as far as to ensure their protection. Pakistan is directly assisting the burgeoning Islamic terrorist threat in the country. Pakistan has long failed to take appropriate action to combat terrorism within and outside the country. The country is now facing the consequences of its inaction and those suffering the most continue to be Pakistani citizens. Growing volatility, hostility and mistrust make Pakistan one of the world's most unsafe countries. The nuclear state with its unstable borders in the north, rising internal conflicts, growing radicalization 
and an ever weakening economy have pushed Pakistan to a point of collapse. With its so called all weather ally, China, dolling out only a small amount of aid due to its own pandemic induced woes. Options for Pakistan are drying up. Let's take a closer look at the challenges Pakistan is facing. Pakistan's close ally and neighbor, China, has invested heavily in the country, building modern transportation networks, special economic zones, and energy projects as part of its multi-billion dollar project, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC. The investments, however, overwhelmingly benefit China only. This has naturally sparked conflicts and resistance throughout Pakistan, as Pakistanis grow increasingly discontent. The growing discontent can be seen in resource-rich Balochistan, where the Baloch have resisted massive Chinese investments, especially in the Gwadar area. There has been a mass displacement of the indigenous population in the region, and many restrictions have been placed on local fishermen because of the Gwadar port construction. The Baloch have begun targeting Chinese workers and contractors and have even begun destroying public property to oppose Islamabad's backing of Chinese investments. Recently, a bomb blast claimed by the Balochistan Liberation Army derailed a passenger train in Balochistan's Bolan district. Some 18 people were injured in the incident. Many such armed outfits have emerged in Balochistan as they continue to target Chinese interests given Beijing's increasing economic footprint in the region. The people of Balochistan are resisting against uh, China uh, because they believe that the Chinese authorities and the Chinese government have become partner of Pakistani state, Pakistani military and establishment in the plundering of Baloch resources. So for the people of Balochistan, uh, as they say, the CPAC is a billion dollar project and it's a game changer. But for the people of Balochistan since day one, it has been a disaster. Pakistan was recently able to secure over 8 billion USD in foreign aid from donors. But this is merely a band-aid. The situation has become so dire in the country that Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif is now on a donation-seeking spree, seeking money from almost anyone and everyone. In another striking blow, Pakistan appears to have been dumped by their sweet-as-honey friend, China. Seeing no positive signs of recovery, many Chinese companies in the crisis-hit country have remained reluctant to continue their projects due to delayed payments, rising exchange rates, and uncooperative behavior of the state authorities. China has even delayed many of its crucial development projects in Pakistan, including the Mainline 1 Railway Project, Karachi Circular Railway Project, Azad Patan Hydropower Project, and the Tar Block 1 Coal Project. Experts fear that the worsening economic conditions and depleting forex reserves may even force Pakistan to sell its nuclear assets. Pakistan's last ditch uh, attempt would be to sell its nuclear uh, weapons. And uh, recently there have been rumors that Pakistan, in collaboration with Pakistan military, has tried to smuggle large quantities of uranium across the globe in, uh, in, uh, to sell it for money. Now I think that the Pakistani nuclear assets are not safe uh, with Pakistan and uh, international body should appoint, immediately it should appoint a, a watch dog that comes to Kahuta and to the Atomic Energy Commission in Pakistan and takes over the day-to-day -day running of the, the whole uh, projects uh, related to uh, atomic energy and uh, uh, nuclear weapons. For over a decade, 
the TTP had been waging a revolt against the Pakistani government to demand the implementation of hard-line Islamic rule and the release of its members from Pakistani jails. The TTP enjoys support from neighboring Afghanistan, which is ruled by the Taliban. Pakistan and its secret services agency, the ISI, miscalculated the Taliban's victory in Afghanistan as an opportunity to control the Pashtun tribal belt. The Taliban, however, actually began to oppose Pakistan's interference in their internal matters. The relationship with Islamabad and Kabul continues to deteriorate, and the conflicts at the border, the Durand Line, have become uncontainable. The multifaceted impact of years of poor governance by politicians and the military establishment in Pakistan are now clearly visible. A country of some 232 million people, Pakistan is facing the threat of bankruptcy, which will have its ripple effects on global peace and stability. Let's shift our focus to India's Jammu and Kashmir with the security forces are carrying out a series of operations to uproot the network of terrorism. In the latest, terror groups operating in the valley received a huge setback when Jammu and Kashmir police busted a lashkar e taiba terror module in Rajouri and apprehended three people associated with it. According to officials, the module was busted after an investigation was launched following the recovery of improvised explosive device having pressure and timer mechanisms in the district. A report. In the past couple of months, several attempts to carry out attacks against Indian security forces in Kashmir have been foiled. The credit for these foiled attacks goes to the alert security grid and it also points to a flourishing human intelligence network that is primarily responsible for such detections. However, in many of these attempts, security forces have recovered improvised explosive devices which are a sign of something dangerous brewing in the dark underbelly of the valley. In the latest, security forces busted a lashkar e taiba terror module in Rajouri and arrested three people associated with it. According to officials, the module was busted after an investigation was launched following the recovery of an improvised explosive device having pressure and timer mechanisms in the district. Yes, this uh, uh, incident, when this incident came out, FIR number 32, in the year 2023, the police station in Rajouri was immediately registered. And it was registered by the DSP headquarters, which is Chanchal Singh, and it was registered by the DSP headquarters. And it was registered by the DSP headquarters. And it was registered by the DSP headquarters. यहीं पे लोकल आपकी खेवरा के ही हैं माजिद डार्क तो जिनसे मजीद पूछताछ अमल में लाई गई और फिर उनके दूसरे एक साथी जोहेब खान जो बाला मंजा कोट के रहने वाले हैं उनको गिरफ्तार किया गया और फाइनली जो इनका हेड था मोहम्मद जबार जो द्राती बाला कोट का रहने वाला है उसको गिरफ्तार किया गया The detection of the IEDs followed a terror attack in Rajouri's Dhangri village in early January that claimed seven lives and injured several. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir police apprehended a teacher-turned-terrorist and recovered a perfume bottle bomb from him. He was walking at the behest of Pakistani handlers and admitted to his involvement in the bombing of a bus carrying Vaishno Devi pilgrims that killed four people and injured 24 in May last year. Katra bus blast which led to 21 people getting injured uh, out of whom five unfortunately died. He was responsible for that incident. He got a supply of uh, three IDs recently uh, towards the end of December. Two IDs were used by him in Marwal area. One is still with him, which has been recovered by police. He was working at the instance of uh, one Qasim, who is a Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorist working uh, from Pakistan 
and organizing terrorist activities in this area. He was responsible for a very large number of terror activities uh, running certain terror modules uh, in Jammu region. Most of these terror modules have been worked out, have been uh, identified and uh, necessary legal action has been taken in that regard. Despite all the embarrassment and name calling at various global forums, Pakistan continues to use terrorism as an instrument of its state policy. In a sophisticated world where the other countries are looking forward to establishing peace, harmony and developing new technologies for the advancement of the world's settlement, Pakistan's stale policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world. Residents settled near the border areas are living in constant fear due to frequent firing along the border from Pakistani side. Pakistani army generals who are the real masterminds behind most of the terrorism across the globe believe that the world won't notice their devious plans. But to their surprise, not only all of their diabolic activities are being monitored but being given a befitting reply by the Indian forces. Moving on, many Afghans have fled abroad since the Taliban took control of the whole country in 2021 and restricted women's right to work and to get education under the strict interpretation of Islamic law. Several Afghan women who obtained professional success in the years after the Taliban was defeated, challenging the country's male-dominated and ultra-conservative society, have left the country. Many Afghanistan's female lawyers are on the run from men they prosecuted. Take a look. Obaida Sharar, a former Afghan prosecutor, expresses relief at having obtained asylum in Spain after leaving Afghanistan soon after the Taliban took control. She is one of 19 female prosecutors who have been granted asylum after spending up to a year in limo in Pakistan without receiving official refugee status following the Taliban's takeover. Sharar claimed that despite feeling safe in Spain, she was unable to enjoy her new life because she knew that other women were suffering. A woman from Afghanistan. Before Taliban took the power, I was a prosecutor and I had my uh, other social and civil activities in my country. But when um, the Taliban took the power and collapsed uh, Afghanistan, so I uh, had to flee from my own country due to the security problems. And after a while, uh, fortunately, I immigrated to Spain. And right now I am here with my family and uh, waiting for a bright future and start a new life. In 2021, a new government that enforced a strict interpretation of Islamic law suddenly reduced the freedoms granted to women in her native country. Over the past year, the Taliban government has prohibited girls and women from enrolling in high schools and colleges. Sharar's occupation and that of her co-workers in Afghanistan was risky. Because they preside over the trials and punishment of men charged with sex based crimes like rape and murder, female judges and prosecutors have been threatened and singled out as targets for retaliation. Many of the women have claimed that Western governments and international organizations have abandoned them. They are so brave because to become prosecutor in Afghanistan, that was so difficult for them and to become a lawyer, to, to become an act activist. And they had to uh, fight uh, uh, sometimes with uh, members of their families, uh, with colleagues, uh, with the culture. So uh, they decided, even though 
all of these troubles, uh, they decided to fight for, the, for it. So uh, we owe them uh, uh, to, to, to help them in this situation. And um, the terrible thing is that uh, they were fighting for civilization in Afghanistan and now they seem to be forgotten. So um, this is really, really terrible. Taliban has said that any Afghan who has left the nation is welcome to return to a repatriation council because Afghanistan is the joint home of all Afghans. However, several reports have confirmed the erosion of basic human rights across the country since the Taliban takeover, pointing out they bear responsibility for extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests and detentions, and violations of fundamental freedoms. Women and girls have seen their rights to access education, the workplace and participate in public life restricted. The de facto authorities have limited dissent by cracking down on protests and curbing media freedoms. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.